Brandon with Elite Earthworks, and I have made it to the Takayuchi booth at the Equip Expo. This is the indoor booth they have. I think they have six machines, three track loaders, three excavators. So it's going to kind of do the quick walk around and show everybody what they brought, what they've got in here, and then we'll go and do a little kind of quick video in the outdoor area. But they got the 12 V2 with the uh, mulching head. I believe it's a FAE. And it does have the forestry package up top on there. And then they got some of their attachments and stuff in the back. And then they got the little TL6, which I believe this is probably their latest or newest addition to their track loaders. It's got the 4-in-1 bucket on it. it. You will notice the door does not roll up on this machine. And the biggest reason for that was, uh, Oh, they want to be able to fit it in like seven foot tall garage doors to get this in some more confined in smaller areas. But everything else on it is exact to the uh, H10s and 12s as well. And then they have the 10 V2 right here. And it's just got the standard bucket on it, but they've also got a couple of the attachments. They got the Harley rake, soil conditioner, or whatever you want to call it. And then the uh, oh, a root grapple bucket, it looks like. Now yeah, this one's even got the winch and stuff. I hadn't walked all the way around yet. I, like I said, I just got here. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty stout little uh, winch and setup on this. That's pretty neat. I haven't actually seen one of these in person. Makes the 12 look much bigger with all that on there. The show's actually open right now for like two hours just to uh, dealers and such. There's not as many people around, so everyone's just kind of getting going for the morning. <laughs> Got the 260 here with the bucket. And there's the uh, the new E20. This is their all electric uh, Mini X. And like I said, more attachments here. I got the trencher, and then they, I think it's a, that's the 335. So got we'll go. Like I said, I go outside. They've got I believe three excavators and three track loaders out there where everybody can demo. And this right here to me is one of the coolest parts of the booth. Uh, <laughs> This just blew me away. I didn't realize they were gonna actually do this or whatever. So uh, yeah, seeing my picture along with my name and everything for everyone to come by and see was, uh, I just never dreamed when I started my YouTube channel and Instagram and stuff that one day that I would actually be working with these guys. And then two, I would have my picture and my name and everything up at a show. So I was, yeah, like I said, it was just, it's a really, really cool deal. These guys have been amazing to work with, just super encouraging and stuff. Cause uh, a lot of you that know me, this is a little awkward for me on the, uh, <laughs> walking around at these shows with the camera and trying to point all that out. But I'm gonna try to do a better job at getting a little more personable on the camera and actually filming a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate everything Takayuchi's done. Like I said, they've been phenomenal to work with. So I'm gonna really try to up my game on the videos and try to reciprocate and deliver for them. So I don't want to, I don't want to let them down in any way, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just thought this was not something I was expecting and it was just super cool to uh, see that out there. So yeah, definitely, definitely blown away by that, Jess. All right, guys, we have made it to the outdoor demo area with the Takeuchi equipment. Uh, it's not actually open, I think in an hour. It's when they'll uh, let everybody in, but yeah, they got three excavators and three track loaders to try out. This is the new TB350R with the Knox tilt rotator on it. You can come check out. And then I believe that other one's a 335 with the bucket. And then I think he's sitting on a 216. So then they have a little uh, 210R here. Like it's just on display or whatever, but they've also got a nice climate controlled trailer. And then there's actually an observation deck up top. So if you bring anybody else with you that's just wanting to watch you run some stuff you can come down here and uh kind of take these machines for a spin so you can go inside look at them talk more specs i got several representatives and stuff out here to meet with you guys go over the controls on the machines and stuff like that but uh yeah you can basically come down here and play in the dirt with them so out here they have the tl6 the 10 i believe a 12 so yeah Basically the same size, the same stuff to what they have on their indoor area, but they got them out here where you can try and, and tell the guys down here digging in the dirt already, but uh, 
Yeah, I figure in the next hour, this place ought to be hopping. So we're gonna stop on by and uh, jump on one of these machines and take them for a spin. Hey guys, Brandon with the Elite Earthworks, and I have made it to the outdoor demo area. The weather is fantastic. And we're having a great turnout out here, so it's gonna be a little tough to go back inside now. I think it's like 65, hardly any wind, but got people lined up here to try these machines out. We've had a really good turnout. It's been neat to be able to talk to them inside about some of the specs on things and then have them come out here and actually put some of these machines through the paces where some of these people can try them out firsthand and uh, see what they think of this equipment. Some of them are in the market to buy and some of them are trading, but uh, yeah, definitely been a lot of fun just to hear the stories with people what they do for a living and uh, what they're getting into and what they're trying to, their goals are and what they're trying to get. So definitely been a fantastic turnout for sure. This is Brandon with the Lead Earthworks. I'm here with Lee Paget, the National Product Manager, and we're just wanting to go over some of the highlights of the booth and show off, showcase some of the machines that they have. Yeah. Do you want me to talk? So uh, <clears throat> this is our forestry package. So this is our new BL4 mulching head, uh, open front bite limiter technology. Uh, four, well, not a four inch tooth, but about a two and a half inch blade on this. This will take down a 12 inch tree. Uh, one thing that's nice about Takuchi is when you order a high flow machine, you're going to get the poly glass door standard for forestry, three quarter inch couplers. Up top, you can see we have a rooftop cooler up there. Um, not necessary due to our large cooling package, but it is nice to have um, just for peace of mind. It lowers your oil temperatures by about 20 degrees up top. So that was we, one of my questions is you don't see a lot of talks yeah. with those. So I didn't know if it was a necessity or well, it's, if it's a smaller just... take rate, obviously, but um, because of the size of our cooling package. But okay. if you are in hotter climates like Arizona, that kind of thing, then, you know, it's going to good gonna idea. Help out for sure. yeah. Right. Not necessary, but is a good, you know, it's going to extend the life of your components. OK, so we can take them around back to show them the uh, already very well built we don't have an exoskeleton like some of the other guys you know we're already kind of well guarded you know we run the side skirts heavy gauge steel towers already very well protected nice heavy gauge steel door in the rear we also have available a 20,000 pound draw pull winch this is a hydraulic winch military grade rated for about 60 years of life wow um, okay so this kind of serves a dual purpose too it's 500 pounds so it's going to give you uh, basically a counterweight kit as well so okay Great I guess you just package. pull that pin and you can access yep. the rear. So there's a little switch here. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, it's a low profile design. So this means that this is smaller here. Some of the other ones you'll see come all the way up to here. While okay. it looks nice and you think that's protecting your door better, it's actually restricting that airflow. It can cause some overheating issues. Okay, so, that's what I've noticed one. on some of them. It seems like they're yeah. they're higher up or they cover more of the rear door. Yeah, but... I've seen some where it's all the way up here and then they put mesh guarding on it and that's yep. just just restricting airflow. So, but we... at least that's nice because it's just a quick pin if you got to blow the radiators yeah. and stuff out in the morning and yep, swings right up. Makes that right and easy. So, one thing about three years ago, we launched a full attachment line. So we offer all kinds of hydraulic attachments for track loaders. Uh, excavators, we have uh, hammers, which you can see on the other end of the booth, but grapples, Harley rakes, 
Uh, we offer the mulcher like you saw before. We have brush cutters. Um, there's a trencher down there. So a full line of Takichi branded attachments. Okay. Um, we've had that at about three years. Uh, buckets, couplers, thumbs, obviously. We also offer hydraulic thumbs, hydraulic couplers, uh, mechanical thumbs, or not, not mechanical thumbs, sorry, uh, mechanical coupler as well. So that's all available through our machine side. So when someone comes to the dealer, I actually don't use near as many as I used to. I've got a grapple bucket and a FFC uh, preparator, which is kind of like a rock hound or Harley. I've got a Harley rig, I just haven't picked it up yet, but, and then a set of pallet forks, but Basically, now that I got the 2150, I basically use all it for all of my clearing and stuff with the thumb and like the, just a tooth bucket on like one of the loaders. So I don't use the uh, grapple bucket quite as much with the clearing as I used to. But The machine for us that's a little unique um, is our TL6. TL6 is um, our only machine you'll see with a swing out door. The reason okay. we do that is because we made this machine to get into a garage, chicken house, that kind of stuff. So it's only six and a half feet tall and it's five feet wide. So you can run a 60 or a 67 inch bucket on this machine. So for me, pound for pound, 7,400 pounds, 65 horsepower, this machine will push. I'll put 76 inch, 80 inch bucket on there. You know, you don't want to dig with that all the time, but it was yeah. able to push it and, you know. I was it, so. extremely impressed with it yesterday, running it outside, outside for a yeah. while. This thing, I, I wasn't really expecting it to, you know, move the amount of dirt or as quick as it did, but so I was pleasantly surprised when I got in there with what it did. So I could definitely see yeah. smaller areas or even though we got a concrete guy in town that sometimes they'll finish the floor in the garage after the house is framed yep so i could see something like this where you could get in there where the you know the eights or the twelves are a little too tall for stuff like that so because yeah, the garage was seven feet yep yeah yep. So, so i could anytime see you had that roll-up door it's six this is six and a half it has four more inches which then gets you out of that garage spec okay so we went with the That's... swing out door but i think they did a great job on this door we can walk around here and look at it this door versus everybody else's door this has flat glass in it heavy gauge steel. Okay. And it actually has a frame. Some of it's them don't even have a frame. That's yep. just the glass itself. I mean, you so. can see how sturdy that is. It doesn't give you that fishbowl effect too when you're in the yes. machine. Yep. But to me, this is one of our more, more quiet machines. When you hear this thing seal up, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's heavy built. <laughs> it's, it's nice. I like this And machine. the cab still has a lot of room, even though it's yeah. you know 7,000 pound machine. I was surprised with that too. It's kind of like your a lot of your guys' other cabs are just a lot more space in them versus mm -hmm. some of the other competitor Very similar machines. cab to the TL8. Okay. So the size, size up from yeah. this one. So that's one thing Takichi offers too, is we have vertical and radial in different size classes. So the 12, you have a radial and a vertical. The six, you have a radial. The eight is a radial, but then you go back to a vertical offering for the 10. So the eight and the 10 are both 74 horsepower machines, um, but one radial, one vertical. So that's a nice and option. And those, I'm sure they'll just stay radials that probably never really need to do a vertical lift on, on the, the, eight. the sixes or the eights or anything. Probably stay radial. You know, radial is going to give you better bucket breakout, lift arm force. Okay. So if you're grading with that machine, radial is the way to go. Okay. If you're going to load and carry, you know, you know, pallets of rock and stuff like that, maybe you want the vertical because you're going to be driving around with a heavy load, then vertical maybe. But if you're just digging, radials, radials always, do it. Okay. always your better That's kind of what I thought was when I got my 12. That's why I went with the R2, because I always kind of heard it was more geared towards cutting and grading and stuff like that. And, and I don't you, do as much like loading to my truck with it since I've got right. the 2150, so. You lose a little uh, hinge pin height. So like, for example, this one, the vertical <clears throat> has about four more inches of hinge pin height. But one of the big selling features for a, ver a vertical machine is that it has more dump reach at full height. Our okay. radial machine actually has more dump reach than everybody else in a radial versus a vertical. So that's, okay. not, a, that's not an that's issue. Know, yeah. So you can still get in there and dump in the center of a dump, yeah. dump truck. When I do have to load mine, I can tell I can still get in yeah. the middle of it. So and actually our radial and vertical, our vertical has one inch less vertical dump height. Oh really? That one actually has less. Okay. It's an inch, but yeah. So it's comparable to a vertical machine. So okay. I guess we'll make our way over to the yeah. uh, excavator side now and kind of check out some of the highlights of those. So now this is your fully electric. Yep. It's not a hybrid or anything. Yep. It's, it's fully electric lithium ion battery power technology. It has about an eight hour runtime um, if you're using it as intended. This isn't meant to just hog dirt all day. You're going to you know, use that breaker that's on there. You're going to drop that, get out, do some work. You're going to get a bucket back out. You're going to finish that hole, okay. you know, that type of work. You'll see a full eight hour day out of this. So. It's been a good machine for us so far. Um, 
some of the highlights on this one will be this tractable undercarriage. The nice thing about this is it'll go from 38 inches to 51 inches. So this will get okay. you through a backyard or a gate or something like that. Even a double door going inside. Um, okay, and you just pop these bolts out, yep. I guess, on the blade. To so the blade. Huh, okay. Flip inside, re-bolt. Once you get in, take them off. Take them back out? Yep. One nice thing about this machine is its versatility in charging. So you have a 110 charging option, which takes probably about 12 hours okay. from zero to full. You have 220, those are both onboard chargers. That'll charge it in about eight hours from zero to full. And then you have an offboard charger that's available for purchase. It's sold separately from the machine, but it'll charge it 483 phase power in about four hours. Okay, so, so if you really need it, to yep. get it back up again. You so. can run this tethered too. You can leave it plugged into 110 or 220. Um, oh, okay. It's not gonna keep it full. It's just gonna help supplement it. Okay. So you um, might see another hour or two out of it if you just left it plugged in. But you know, the real benefit is you don't have to have this plugged in, but if you did need to, you know, and you can plug it up on lunch at a 110, you can plug it in. Yeah, you know, yeah, while you're gone. While you're but I'm sure lunch. it's one of those deals, like if you're digging in something harder, if the machine's having to work harder, obviously it's not gonna last as long. Yeah, it's all or, relative, you know, okay. what kind of work you're doing. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna choose that breaker wide open for five hours, you know, you might run the machine down, where if you're using the breaker, get off, get do the, the work in the hole. Put the bucket. Okay. Switch the bucket, backfill, you know, dress, whatever you gotta do, you're, you'll see a full eight hours. Us and only two other people are making a fully electric that's available to purchase right now. Okay. Um, there's actually some pretty big incentives on these right now, do some rebates we got from the uh, government. So we're passing that on to our customers. So you can get one of these pretty close to what you can get a diesel for right now. Really? Yep. Okay. I can yep. definitely see the benefit in places because it's like I have told you before, a few years ago, I had to do kind of some tearing out of a concrete in a strip yep. mall area while the other businesses were open and we had a little diesel engine one. So we had some complaints from noise and fumes and stuff like that. So I and, could definitely see. And that's what this is made for. It's a niche machine, you know, food services, schools, hospitals, urban areas that have noise restrictions, anything like that. This is going to be your machine. We have a 260 over here. 260, you own so, one of these, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. So do you have the um, Takichi coupler on it? No, that was, hydraulic I got coupler. it in 19. I got a hydraulic, okay. it's a work brow coupler, okay. bucket and thumb. Point. I think you guys came out with all this maybe a year yeah. after that, I okay. think. So. Gotcha. Yeah, so we offer full hydraulic couplers. Um, nice thing about the 260 and up, um, they come cloned with a third auxiliary circuit. From okay, the see, mine doesn't have that. I right, was gonna so say, I, we actually had to run the lines yep. for the hydraulic coupler all yep. the way down. So that that's a nice This saves feature. you several thousand bucks. Yeah, you it's can a cleaner almost look, just, I think. And, well, you can almost just go to a hydraulic over a mechanical pin grabber because you're not paying this extra four grand for install and circuit yep. <clears throat> and it's already plumbed up. So really all you do is put the hoses right here. It's already got the safety uh, equipment built in. So you push the okay. plunger down, hold the trigger and it releases the bucket. So it's high pressure hold and high pressure release. So this circuit basically just provides high pressure to release the coupler to overcome the spring. Okay. But it's built into the machine. And then you're able, if you have like a tilt bucket, you obviously have another set of yep. auxiliary hydraulics so you can run the thumb and that bucket and stuff. Yeah, so 260 up, you're gonna get two, a primary and secondary. This would be your thumb circuit generally. Primary, maybe you'd run your attachment and your third auxiliary, you'd run, oh, this will only run a coupler. Okay. It's not really flow per se. This yeah. is just a pressure circuit. So yeah, nice feature. How do you like your 260? I love it. It's probably one of the most well-balanced machines with a lot of power for that mm -hmm. size. I That was basically my first uh, excavator I bought with you guys, new and stuff. And that's primarily what I did with the TL250 and then using the 260. And I actually got to where I used the 260 a lot more stuff. I'd come in there and dig or loosen it up and then bring the loader in. We're used to, I'd just take the loader to dig out driveways and do different things. But it, it's amazing how versatile these have become because I think now I want to say I've got almost every size bucket from an 18 inch to a 42 inch on it. Then I've also got a ripper, a grading rake, a compaction wheel. I have more attachments for this than I do my track loaders and stuff, so. Yeah. That's but, the pink ripper you showed me? Now the pink ripper goes on the 2150, okay. so. <laughs> gotcha. But so yeah. Last thing we can touch on too is there are uh, R-series machines. Um, this is the TB335R. So this is gonna be a zero tail machine. So, okay, so it is a Z. I couldn't remember if it was zero or minimal or tail. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have a 335R right now and we have a 350R uh, right now. So a okay. three and a half ton and a five ton. All right, Equip Expo 2024 has come to a close. So these guys are kind of in cleanup mode now, trying to get everything tore down. Uh, the outside closed an hour ago. And we were able to stay out there and actually got to help a little bit, kind of grading and cleaning that up. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, 
for those of you that did make it by, you know what I'm talking about. This show was huge. So it was, we had a good turnout. Even today, it was seemed pretty steady up until like the last hour. It kind of slowed down, but uh, definitely a show that you need to check out for sure. So I didn't realize, I'd only been to the Utility Expo a couple of years ago. I didn't realize how much bigger this show actually was. And it looks like it gets bigger and bigger every year. So it's also every year where the Equip uh, Expo is every other year. So definitely next October, be sure to put this one on your list. I know the Takuchi guys are gonna be here. I'm hoping to come back, kind of work with them. And uh, I'm, we may even be at the Utility Expo as well. For those that came by, I, I visited a ton of people and it was, Awesome, just meeting them, passing out hats, just kind of talking shops, seeing what they do, where they're from and stuff like that. So the people definitely make the show or whatever. That was probably the funnest part of this whole thing is just meeting everybody and coming by. So we look forward to next year. Can't wait to see you guys. Stay elite.